I received a lot of positive feedback on this video I did where I talked about leaving academia and people have expressed to me that need that they've also had to leave academia perhaps because they find that getting a tenure position is difficult or um, maybe they're stuck in a low paying position and they would like to see what else is out there. I'm here to tell you there's so much more out there for you and I wanted to do this video because I wanted to share with you what you should start doing right now if your plan is to leave if this is your situation. The first thing you should start doing if you're planning on stepping out of academia is really to take stock of the skills that you have beyond your subject area. There's another video I did where I talked about transferable PhD skills. Some of those skills include research. Yes, Research is very much needed out there in industry. I was looking online today and there was an article where they were talking about um, the need for consultants. And as a consultant, you will be using your research skills, consultants in the business world, consultants in life sciences, consultants in healthcare. Okay, so there are jobs out there that really rely on your research skills when it comes to data analysis. Okay, there are a lot of data analyst jobs out there that will depend on you having that data analysis skill set. Writing, I'm a scientific writer. And there are writing opportunities out there that pay pretty well and which you can rely on your writing skills from your PhD to do. There's so many things that your skills can apply to. Now, the reason why you want to take stock of your skills and realize what skills you have beyond just your subject area is because you want to then match those up with what the market is is advertising with what the job market is saying there's a need for. So like I told you, there is a huge need for consultants right now. And if you are an individual that has a PhD in a particular field, let's say you have a PhD in business administration, you have a PhD in chemistry, have a PhD in biology or in biomedical sciences like I do, then there are consultancies in each of these fields that need your skills, right? And if you can show them most of the time, right? If you can show people that you have those skills that are needed for those positions, you can snag those positions. If you're not doing this already, you should do them. A lot of people have done them with me. And what am I talking about? I'm talking about informational interviews. So as you take stock of your skills and you look at what roles you could possibly fit into out there in the big wide world, okay? You want to find people that are already in these roles. Personally, I find that LinkedIn is a great way for you to do this. If you wanna know how to network on LinkedIn, I did a video on how to do that. Check that out after this video. And a part of the beauty of LinkedIn is that if you find somebody in a particular role, right, you can begin to talk with them. You can begin to communicate with them. Some people are open, some people will not respond. It's okay, that's how life is. Pay attention to the people that respond. Most of the time, I'd say 90% of the time when people reach out to me and ask to meet with me over Zoom for like 15 minutes or 20 minutes, I'm more than happy to do that. Otherwise, then it's a consultation, right? So there has to be some exchange of money there. But most of the time, people want to just talk for like 15 or 20 minutes or sometimes people even send me their questions via email. And when I have the time, I'll respond to them. And I'm happy to because I know that when I was on this journey, I needed help as well. And I learned a lot just by reading other people's posts, just by engaging online, right? And so do not be an island. You can't do this on your own, I promise. It's so much more better if you seek the help of others and if you do informational interviews. Now, what's an informational interview? An in informational interview is simply finding somebody that does something and then chatting with them about their work. What does their day look like? What can you expect? 
as a science writer for instance if you were talking to me how did you get into this role and if you haven't already read that or watched that on my channel maybe you could have asked me that right um what skills do i need what books what courses should i be getting into um how do i translate my skills for my phd so they will share their experiences with you and what that does is that it, it gives you a, some knowledge and some idea of what you can expect if you land an interview in that field. Trust me, it's going to change your life. I want you to think about what a PhD stands for. A PhD stands for Doctor of Philosophy. Philosophy is a love of knowledge. We are literally the masters of learning, right? And so if you're finding that, okay, I'm taking stock of my skills, I'm looking in the market and there's nothing that's matching up, what I'm going to recommend to you is to read some books or take courses. There are two platforms that I highly recommend where you can get very, very affordable courses. The first one is Skillshare. I'm gonna leave a link below where you can get Skillshare courses. The second one is Udemy. They have very affordable courses and what you can do is you can find a specific skill or even take it as a refresher, for instance. When I started writing and I started getting paid to write before that, and this was back in 2017, I did take a course on freelance writing and that gave me the basic skills I needed on how to like even pitch myself to publications to, for them to say yes for me to write for them, right? So even just basic skills like that, you, you'll be so surprised as to what you can learn in some of these courses. So I would take the time, carve out some time in your day to take some of these online courses and learn some skills that then put you in, in an even better position, right? To apply for those jobs on the market. Because trust me, I really do believe that we currently live in a job market that really, if you are able to show that you have a skill that that job market needs, you already have the education, you already have a PhD. It's very, very likely that you're gonna get that job. So don't wait around, read a book, take a course, go on Udemy, go on Skillshare, go on Amazon Kindle, find resources that help you strengthen the skills that you already have so you're better positioned for the job market. Then I want to say this here, that there is light at the end of the tunnel. I know how it can feel. You know, you feel like I have a PhD. I've been studying all my life. How come I'm under earning and how come I can't find something that suits, that will help me, you know? I know that frustrating feeling, but I want to encourage you that there is light at the end of the tunnel. I'm here to tell you that, right? So if you're feeling like that right now, don't give up. Don't give up on the search. Don't give up on honing on your skills. Don't give up. Continue pushing. Eventually, you're going to get where you want to get. And as a matter of fact, if you want to watch how I, okay, became a science writer after my PhD, you'll learn that it was quite a bit of a journey. You can watch that video right here to get some motivation.